even though organic fertilizers are generally considered to have lower burn potential compared to inorganic fertilizers, when applied at high rates, for example 2 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet as used in this site, application must be uniform. In this example, the areas with heavy organic fertilizer application resulted in turf damage due to excessive soil ammonium and nitrate levels. Let's take a look at the diagnosis. The damage started out slowly and began to spread like a disease might have spread as a result of nitrogen being released from the organic fertilizer. The hexagon plugs were placed before the larger areas were affected. Unfortunately, the damage continued to move out from the initial areas. The hexagon plugs are not declining because high nitrogen soil was removed to a depth of 2 inches when the hexagons were installed. Three cup cutter samples were collected from the mostly dead area, a nearby chlorotic and stressed area with intermediate damage, and the adjacent healthy area. Let's take a look at the appearance of the samples that arrived at the lab and tests of soil nitrogen content. So you can see the damage, heavy damage on the heavily affected areas, uh, most of the turf is dead but some are still alive. The intermediate area is chlorotic, there's some healthy turf right down the center but it still looks like it's stressed, so you see that little spot of turf that looks okay. And then the healthy turf looks, uh, looks perfectly good, doesn't seem to be any problem whatsoever. Let's just review a second the target soil nitrogen levels that, that we use at Pace Turf uh, to help determine whether we've got the right kind of levels in the soil or whether we might see a problem with uh, nitrogen in the soil. Our targets are ammonium or ammonia less than seven parts per million and if we get higher levels than that it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have damage but we see uh, plants decline as we start to approach higher levels. I'd like to see nitrate at less than 20 parts per million, parts per million. And this level is actually equivalent to an application of about one pound of N per thousand square feet. So that's a really a high level of, uh, of nitrate nitrogen. So we don't like to see that high level. So we want something lower than that. So that's obviously the maximum. And our total, uh, less than 20 parts per million of these two uh, uh, factors, uh, ammonium and nitrate nitrogen. Now this is not looking at organic nitrogen in the soil and you always have to keep in uh, an account that there is organic nitrogen in the soil depending on how much organic matter you have that will release through the season uh, the same way that or organic fertilizers will release nitrogen. So you almost have to add uh, that organic nitrogen release into your total nitrogen use. So let's take a look uh, using these uh, numbers as the guideline uh, on the situation that we saw with these applications of uh, organic fertilizers to see uh, how far off the uh, nitrogen levels got uh, with, the, uh, with the nitrogen fertilizer applied. When we use a one-to-one uh, -one soil sub suspension and the Hawk strip, we get a reading, direct reading with the strip of about 15 parts per million and when we convert that to a soil equivalent level, that comes out to be about 25 parts per million nitrate nitrogen. Now we have to remember that we're not measuring uh, ammonium nitrogen or urea nitrogen or uh, amino acids or proteins or other organic nitrogens. This is only nitrate nitrogen. Now let's take a look at the other two plugs. Well, As we scan over to the other two plugs, you'll notice that we're not detecting any nitrate nitrogen using the Hawk strip uh, for either the intermediate or the good performing area. Now let's take a look at the results that came back from a commercial lab for nitrate and ammonium to see how they compare. The paste turf targets are at the bottom of the table where we see 20 parts per million nitrate nitrogen, less than 7 parts per million ammonia nitrogen, and less than 20 parts per million total nitrogen, which that's equivalent to 1 pound of N per thousand square feet. Now if we look at the poor area, we're picking up 14 parts per million nitrate nitrogen, that's within the guidelines, but the ammonia nitrogen at 87 parts per million is way above the desired 7 parts per million uh, target. With a total of 101 parts per million, uh, that's about equivalent to 5 pounds of N per thousand square foot in application, so that gives us an idea of where the problem is. The intermediate area is, is reporting 7 parts per million nitrate, which is fine. Ammonium nitrogen at uh, 29 parts per million, which is excessive, and we have a little bit over the top with 36 parts per million on the uh, total nitrogen. The good performing area has 7 parts per million nitrate nitrogen, 22 parts per million ammonium nitrogen, which is too high with a total of 29 parts per million. So they're all just a little bit edgy, but way over the top on the heavily damaged area. 
Unfortunately, these numbers suggest that there might be some continued decline. Well, you stayed around so far in the video. I'm going to take a few minutes to go through some of the, just roughly some of the chemical reactions that take place in the soil for organic fertilizers and, and urea, just to show you how that works down for, from the product to uh, ammonia and then nitrate. And if you want to stay around, uh, go ahead. Otherwise, now's a good time to turn the video off if you're not ready for a little bit of chemistry. Okay, in this case, we got unexpected release of nitrogen in the form of ammonia, and then that ammonia was metabolized down to nitrate uh, in some areas and is slowly being metabolized down to nitrate further uh, in the system. The, the breakdown of the proteins was way too fast. It shouldn't have taken that uh, rapid route. We're not quite sure why that happened. High microbial activity uh, probably was involved. And then probably the conditions were anaerobic for a while that resulted in the nitrogen uh, breaking off the proteins as ammonia and then being stuck in the ammonium form uh, rather than metabolizing all the way down to nitrate. So let's just take a look at the composition of these uh, proteins uh, in organic materials and also how that relates to urea and how the same type of thing can happen with the urea fertilizer. The way nitrogen becomes available in organic materials is primary from the breakdown of proteins to amino acids to ammonia and nitrate. So let me just take you through the steps of how this works and where the, where the sensitivities are in the system and the environment and where microbes are important and where air or oxygen is important to make these steps work properly. Okay, the way it works is proteins are made of amino acids. Now I'm going to draw one of the most simple amino acids that there is. It's called alanine. It has a C, double bond O, It's not that important to remember the name, but it's the important thing uh, to remember about the way uh, amino acids work is that there is an amino group uh, next to a carboxyl, or this acid group on the end, so they're called amino acids. And uh, this is the source of the nitrogen, uh, is these amine groups. And then this side over here, where this is, this is called a, well, it's carbon group called a methyl group, that can be replaced by a variety of longer chains and different types of chains. Well, so if we compare urea to that simple amino acid that we had up a second ago, just using a little shorthand there, uh, the difference with uh, between sort of an amino acid and urea is if you would just take these parts away, we have another amine group. That's urea, quite a bit simpler molecule, but you'll see that it's got uh, the same factors. It's got these amine groups uh, associated with the carbon. And it takes uh, an enzyme called urease to cleave this off to yield ammonia. Now I've shown you two ways that you can get ammonia out of, uh, out of organic fertilizers or urea. And we're talking about urea, IBDU, uh, urea formaldehydes, uh, sulfur-coated urea, polymer-coated urea. All of those products, the uh, organic materials and uh, urea-based products, are going to yield ammonia as the first step in the breakdown or, or making the product available to the plants in the soil. Then from there, we have bacteria that will uh, utilize oxygen to make nitrite. And then in another step, nitrate. And that's an important uh, process because if this doesn't happen, if there's not enough oxygen available for these two steps to happen, which they would normally happen very rapidly in a healthy soil, you'll have accumulation of ammonia in the soil. And when this is in the soil solution, it actually uh, will pick up another hydrogen to give it a positive charge. This thing will end up with a positive charge uh, as an ammonium ion, um, and it will absorb tightly to the soil particles. So this material is not going to move out of the soil. This material you can leach out of the soil if you needed to. So the difference in the two is this one can accumulate if these steps get, uh, 
get inhibited. And if it does happen that these get inhibited, uh, toxic levels of ammonia can accumulate in the soil by the breakdown of organic materials in urea. Those of you who have seen our previous videos uh, know that we like to keep our samples around or portions of our samples around for a while just to see what happens and how they develop. These samples are retained for a little over 10 days and we recheck the nitrate levels of the uh, thatch area on each one of these samples just to compare uh, to what we had seen previously. We noticed that we didn't get much of a nitrate response earlier because most of that nitrogen was locked up in ammonium. So here's the results that we uh, saw after about 10 days at a 72 degrees in a moist condition where there's a lot of air available so the metabolism kept going in the system. As expected the ammonium and organic materials metabolized down to nitrate and we see a lot more nitrate reported using the Hawk nitrate strip up to 78 parts per million for the uh, bad area uh, where the turf is pretty well uh, toast. Uh, the area where it's uh, intermediate we're now uh, reporting around 33 parts per million when you convert it to a soil equivalent and then in the areas where the uh, turf is doing uh, pretty well still uh, we're reporting about 18 parts per million that's the only one that's within our nitrate guideline so it gives you an idea of uh, how these nitrate strips work but it doesn't detect the ammonium or organic material that's left in these samples uh, to metabolize down that can cause a problem sometimes later but uh, if we take a look at these uh, samples, you can see that the, the, there was no recovery in the, uh, in the, in the damaged uh, turf. The intermediate one still seems to be growing okay, so it's not collapsing further. And the good area seems to be, uh, seems to be just fine. It's growing pretty robustly. And if we turn these up on their side, you'll see uh, that the, uh, the good areas uh, got about 30% more turf, but it looks like it's going to recover. Refer to the information associated with this update for additional information on nitrogen.